Welcome to the Pastor and Intern Podcast with Pastor Eric Dyer, Intern Will Emery, and our new content lead, Kayla Popwell. We want to remind you that the CSB Bible is the most accurate and readable Bible translation available to us now. We are always excited to be sponsored by the CSB Bible, which allows us to do things like giveaways. Speaking of giveaways, Kayla, why don't you tell us about our upcoming giveaway? Okay, so the Pastor and Intern Podcast is partnering with the CSB for a giveaway, of course. We will be giving away the recently released Ancient Faith Study Bible by the CSB that includes commentary from the early church fathers and their take on heresies and other issues in the early church. The Christ-Centered Expedition on Revelation by Danny Aiken. We recently interviewed Danny Aiken on the podcast. This book is an easy-to-read commentary for the average church member and a $10 Chick-fil-A gift card. Now, to enter the giveaway, you will need to like and follow us on our social media platforms. There are different ways to enter the giveaway to give you a better chance at winning. Go check out our most recent posts on our social media to get more details on how to enter. That's great. So, can I enter this giveaway? Like, I need to know. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to enter just for the Chick Fil A gift card. Okay. Yeah, me too. I'm going to make some bot accounts that are going to like it for me, so that I'll have more chances. <laughs> right. Okay. That's a good idea. No, I'm joking. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you you um, are, I may, who knows. Okay, good. So in today's episode, I think it would be a good thing for us to do as church members to talk about the church and entertainment. So I want to I want to separate this podcast into two things. One is, is it okay to be entertained just as a Christian in general? Like, is this something we need to look for? Is this okay for us to do? And then the second part is entertainment as it comes to the church. So first, I want to talk about music. So... There's a lot of opportunities for us, as Americans especially, to go to concerts, to buy music, to have people that we like to listen to, whatever. Uh, and, and it kind of comes into our Christian scene. So when I was growing up, and I was talking to Kayla about this just a second ago, uh, I listened to either uh, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, uh, Led Zeppelin, whatever. That's what I listened to, because my parents listened to it. You have to listen to what your parents listen to when you're in the car with them. You just have to. Uh, or we listen to Christian music. To my parents, those were the same thing. They're definitely not the same thing, but whatever. So that's what we need to listen to. So we listen to this band called The Newsboys. Now, for anybody that's listening right now, uh, The Newsboys now and The Newsboys then were completely different. Like, I don't even know if there's an original member left in The Newsboys that was in it before. There might be one, actually. But anyway, so they were a lot different. And this was the 90s, so music was a lot different. It had to be your thing. And 90s music really wasn't my thing. But there's a song in particular that I was talking to Caleb about because it's so ridiculous when I was when I look back at the lyrics. So this song is called Breakfast by the Newsboys. And I'm just going to read you what the chorus says. Are you ready for this? Okay. It says this. When the toast has burned and the milk has turned and Captain Crunch is waving farewell. This is not a joke. It's real. <laughs> when the big one finds you, I assume that's God, may this song remind you that they don't serve breakfast in hell. Okay, so when you go to hell... <laughs> are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> there's no breakfast. Is, is, that, is that the depth of my like my Christian music? And I'm like, I don't even know when that song came out. I didn't look it up, but I was probably 10, 11, or 12 when I heard that song, thinking that that's Christian music. Like, this isn't a Veggie Tale song. This isn't... A movie. This is this is what I'm listening to, and it it. I don't know that it it did. It certainly didn't help me in my Christian life, but it it, it might have harmed me. And I and I don't and I and I'm not saying that anyone who likes that song is is bad, but I, but I think there has to be a certain depth to the music that we listen to. But I, and I kind of want to pose this question to you guys. I don't care which one of you goes first, but. As far as your Christian music goes, the Christian music that you listen to, do you seek to be entertained by it more than you uh, need to be discipled by it or to be changed by it or to worship God through it? Like, which is it for you? Like, is it, is it, I want to be, I want to listen to this person because I like how they sing and I like what they say, or is it, you know, I'm going to worship through this person or I'm going to worship. Uh, through this song I'm listening to, which which ballpark do y'all think you fall in? You can get uh, it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I good question. So I'm trying to think of my like my normal day to day. 
Do I? Because like, if you, if you listen to the last podcast, right, my the spiritual discipline I think I'm, I do pretty good at is the worship. I really enjoy worship. I'm a big praise and worship fan, big Christian music fan. Um, but do I listen to? And maybe I maybe I'm misunderstanding your question. But do I sure. listen to music all the time, thinking about like? Because I do think there are times that yes, I will just throw on a song because I enjoyed it. It yeah. sounds good. Yeah. I like yeah. the guy who's singing it. But in the like the back of my mind, I'm thinking about something else. I'm not really paying attention. It's just kind of on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know that. But I do think again, there's intentional times where something will be going on in my life, and I think, okay, that's a really good song to listen to that kind of portrays to this. Yeah, that'll really kind of put me in this um, area of worship, I guess. It, which normally, if we're being honest, this happens in our cars, right? This happens. Yeah. For those of us that can drive, if you can't drive, this may happen in your room at night, whatever it may be. But we put these songs on for the intention of worship. And so I, I don't know if that even answers your question, but I, I do think there are times where um, I'm just kind of going down the road and I'll just throw whatever's on, on, just click play and just let it sure. go. And I'm not intentionally thinking, okay, how does this song point me to Christ in a deeper way? But then again, I think there are times when when I will put something on that I'm thinking, okay, this may, this is really going to help me worship in this kind of area of my life. But even then that, that makes me think of the question, well, should I even do that? Should I, because I'm like searching out for a song to make me feel better. Should that even, does that even work? Or do I just need to, so I, I don't know. That's kind of my, I think I do both, mm, but okay. kind of a roundabout. What about you, Kayla? Well, I would say like, for me, it just kind of depends kind of like you, but like say like in the mornings on my way to class or like, I don't know, whenever I turn on Christian music, then it's more so for like worship. Mm-hmm. I'm doing that as like my worship time, I guess you could say. But like there's other times during the day whenever I'll turn on Christian music just because I want something playing. I'm not sure. really necessarily doing it for worship. But like you said, I mean, should I do that or should I not? I don't really know. Right. But. Well, I th- I think we'll get there. I think we'll get to the answer that we're looking for. But so a- as a whole, and in my in my, I, f- I kind of feel bad about what I what I read a second ago because I don't want that to shade people's opinion about Christian music because it it's not like that anymore. As f- as far as I know, there's not a whole lot of Christian singers that sing really uh, lines that just aren't good like that anymore that have to do with breakfast in hell. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of out I there. Think as, yeah, I think as Christians, but if you listen to that album, it's a whole lot like that. But as Christians, I feel like music in general has gotten better. Uh, but I guess my next question is, because y'all are younger than me, uh, what is your view on Christian music? Like, is it here? Is it is it caught up? Is it contemporary enough? Is it is it entertaining enough? Is it is it what you want? Because when you when you turn on a Christian station... And then you switch to the popular secular station. There's a vast difference in even the beats and the music employed. I'm not even talking about the lyrics because obviously mm-hmm. those are different. But there's a huge gap there to me. But I want to post it to you guys because y'all are younger. Y'all are hip, you know. So I, I kind of want y'all's opinion about <laughs> what y'all think about the music. I, I just want to know. Well, uh, okay. I want to be careful for it. This is next week's podcast episode is good and bad Christian music. Sure. But um, so my, my like short and sweet answer, I think would be, I think it's good sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you mentioned, I, I still think there's even now there's some bad Christian music. So the thing that comes to mind when I think, okay, cause I do do that, right. I'll, I'll listen to the, the, uh, well, I can't even think of the station name now, but whatever the popular Christian station is around here. Mm-hmm. And I'll think, okay, I've heard that song a thousand times about sick of hearing it because that's, that's the reality with Christian music, right? Is you're never going to not hear good, good father by Chris Tomlin. Right, I heard it yesterday. You're, just, you're yeah. not. It's it always, yeah. it's always going to play, and that's also what I like about the secular stations is because there's a lot. Now the music's not great. Now don't don't misunderstand me. I'm not advocating that we should all go listen to the secular stations all the time, mm-hmm. but the difference is that they play a lot of uh, different things a lot more frequently because there's a lot more music that comes out mm-hmm. in the secular station. There's more artists, more music comes out because of that. There's a different things that go into that, um, and so. I don't know. I I do think if we're not worried about the lyrics, there are times where I will be listening to the Christian station and think, okay, I've, again, I've heard the song a thousand times, or um, I'm, t- I'm just tired of feeling depressed because the song sounds sad and I need something more upbeat, and, mm-hmm. which there is Christian music like that. But so I will switch over sometimes to that nature. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's, I think it's okay. I think there's certain songs that are okay. I think there's certain 
certain artists that are okay. I don't know that all of it's okay. Yeah. And that's hopefully what we'll touch more on next week. It's right. a lot more in depth on what should go into Christian music. Sure. Uh, but I think that that has to be addressed, that you have to be very, very careful with what you're listening to. I don't mm-hmm. think we can just throw that, which goes into this episode as well with the entertainment, is we you have to be careful what's coming in, yeah. regardless of you know whether you're truly listening or it, it just kind of it shapes and forms your theology mm-hmm. um and so I, I think it's okay i don't think it's horrible i don't think it's the best it can be i think it's a lot better though as you mentioned over the past few years okay so what you Kayla? um i'd probably say about the same thing i feel like it's okay but i do feel like there are certain artists that are their their music's more spot on and scripture based than others mm mm-hmm. And I do feel like you kind of have to be careful with like some of the songs you listen to because, I mean, some of the stuff they're singing, you might not 100% see eye to eye with, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. some of the stuff they say and I don't know, just some of the things that they put in their songs. So I do feel like you have to pay attention to, I don't know, the lyrics and the songs and stuff too because you could be singing something that's not even like true necessarily if you're not Mm -hmm. paying attention Mm -hmm. right well i agree and i think something to kind of remember here is do not get your theology from christian music yes Yes. i don't care how good the artist is Mm -hmm. how don't do not ever get your theology it's just like when you open a book and read a book you should not get your theology unless it's the bible unless it's scripture don't take what that artist said and say, okay, this is this is gospel, this is what I believe. Right. So I think that's something always to remember in the forefront of your mind is, okay, this sounds really nice, sounds really good. Yeah. Um, but is this, where where do we see this biblically? Is this really in the Bible? But again, we'll talk about that more next week. So. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is movies. So uh, I, I love movies. I'm a movie person. I could sit down and watch movies all day. It's one of my favorite things to do of all time. I love going to the movies, getting a big thing of popcorn, <laughs> and loving my life. That's what I love to do. When I was in college, I went every weekend. Like That's what I wanted to do. So moving that more into the Christian scene, what, just real quick off the top of your head, what was the last Christian movie you watched? Just off the top uh, of your head. First thing I think of is I Can Only Imagine. Okay, yeah. That's a that's a pr- fairly recent one. I think that, that may have been the last one. Kayla, do you have one? I'm trying to think. Like what the last one I watched in theaters or the last just one in I general. just watched in general. It's like it's a who are the guys that do like the fireproof and like oh, those like the facing yeah. the giants. The it was Kendrick, courageous. The, yeah, courageous. It's the Kendrick brothers, yeah. yeah. Courageous is the last one I watched. Okay. I watched uh Interview with God on Netflix mm-hmm. just because it looked interesting. But anyway, so so I ask you that because I feel like Christian movies are starting to gain a little traction with the community as a whole because you know the culture is becoming less and less christian literally by the second uh if it even is christian anymore and that's a whole another issue uh, so when you say christian movies you mean okay so like the ones we just mentioned the fireproof courageous yeah war room do you yeah. do you also oh, mean I like the it. didn't hollywood come out with those like the noah the noah and stuff do yeah you, i don't really mean that those? no i don't okay, really no, no. i don't really mean that <laughs> okay. no i've never no, seen no, them so i don't no, know much about no. them but like they're they're striving to be accurate in whatever biblical truth they're trying to portray okay whether it's fixing your marriage or who god is or whatever so we're thinking fireproof courageous war room yeah okay so i watched this movie interview with god i didn't really want to watch it but my wife wanted to watch it so i said okay great we'll watch this so it's only an hour and 30 minutes long i think uh and it's okay so i watched it and I'm, i'm a pretty hefty critic i gotta be honest i I, I just can't sit there and watch anything. I'll just pass out. Like I, I just can't do that. Uh, and so I'm watching it, and it, it's about this guy who's having marital trouble, your typical Christian introduction to a movie. And then he goes and interviews with God two or three times. First interview is really good. Uh, and this is not a podcast about the movie, but it just feels like we're scared in our Christian movies to get too in-depth about who Jesus and God really is because we're afraid that we're going to get hokey and super spiritual, and no one's going to understand what we're saying, or it's just going to be feel good, or whatever. And I feel like that in every movie. Now, I'll say that when I was watching an Interview with God, probably the first 30, 40 minutes, I was really impressed. Like, the production value was good, the actors were good. I had, I even noticed who some of the actors were. Like, I could rec- I didn't know their names, but I could recall them from other movies, and they were re- very good. The writing in the beginning was really good, and that kind of fell off there towards the end. But where do you where do you guys see the state of Christian movies? Like what 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 do you think about that? 
I feel like it's kind of a hit or miss. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I guess it just depends on the movie. Okay. What about you? Will? Yeah, the first the first Christian movie I can think of that I ever saw was was probably Courageous. I don't think I can think of anything before that because then because Fireproof was a big hit. It came out before then, but I never. I didn't watch Fireproof until recently, but so you have the courageous. I think of the War Room, right? War with Room the, is great with the uh, Priscilla Shire. Priscilla Shire. Shire. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what do I think about Christian movies? I I don't know. I'm not even a big movie fan as it is. Yeah, you're really like not. I'm not, like Eric asked me all the time about like like the Star Wars. I didn't watch the Lord of the Rings any of them until like June of last year. So yep. I'm just I don't know. I don't really have a. I mean, I guess it's good they're here. I mean, if they're if they're biblically sound and they're somehow portraying the gospel in a way, mm-hmm. I think they're good, but I don't know. I'm just not a big movie fan in period. So, it, Well, I think, I think even someone listening to this podcast, and I don't even know if, if y'all have caught onto the theme, but it, just to put a bow on it, music and movies, as far as Christianity goes, feels hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't yeah. feel like it's on this great solid foundation. It I doesn't agree. feel like, uh, it feels like it's got a lot of work to do. And I think that when we think about that, compared to entertainment, I feel like it's hard to mix entertainment and Christianity together. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's not a perfect mixture. I don't think you mix them together and it makes this beautiful cake. Like I'm just, it's just not the way it is. And I think that that kind of has been, the more I've thought about this topic over the past three or four days, has really developed in me a sense of wanting to kind of be at arm's length away from entertainment. Not that entertainment, I, I don't think entertainment is bad in of itself. But I think that when we're trying to incorporate music, because there are some great Christian songs. Like, y'all would agree with that, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. there's some songs where you're like, when it comes on the worship track or you're at a conference right. or something, you're like, here we go. It's mm-hmm. about to get real in here. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and there's some Christian movies that we like. I don't know that there's a great Christian movie, you know, but there's, there's some movies that we like. So that leads me into the last kind of entertainment question I want to pose to y'all. Uh, these big name title books that come out. So... You know, we read, what was the book we read by Francis Chan? It was Letters to the Church. Letters to the we Church, read that right. when it came out. Um, you know, there's the Radicals, there's the Crazy Loves, there's the Desiring God. You know, all of these, like, flashy, They're not only are the names flashy and everybody knows who they are, but they're done by the pastor that everybody loves and they melt when they hear them talk, you know. Uh, so I guess my question to y'all is, when we read Christian books, are we looking to get closer to, and to Jesus and become more like Jesus through our experience? Or are we reading this Christian book because it's the new hot thing and we want to say that we read it and we look cool for reading it and we read it like within the first 24 hours? It's kind of like that Harry Potter thing where like people would like line up at the door wanting their new Harry Potter book and like I was the guy that drove by screaming spoilers, but I was just making it all up and people would yell and all that stuff. Like, is it like that? Or are we really looking for discipleship opportunities through these people? I feel like you should be looking for discipleship opportunities, but I don't. I wouldn't say that that's like always what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. I think personally, I've I've most definitely like the ex- you did a really good example, the Chan book. Yeah, I probably would have never read that Letters to Church book if it wasn't written by Francis Chan. Yeah, just because it, I, we probably wouldn't have known about it. So I I think I agree right we should we should come to those books thinking okay how can I learn more about Jesus in while reading this but I I don't know I think I do and I don't know that it's a I mean I don't know that it's a horrible thing maybe it's because I look at myself and say like like for example the Desiring God by Piper I don't know that we would we we would that book came out a long time ago if I'm correct yeah I don't know that we would continue to read that now if it wasn't written by Piper. You know, if it was written by some other average Joe who nobody really hurts of, doesn't know much about him, mm-hmm. um, he just read, written a. Because I, I think about all the all the people who wrote really good books in their time, but they you don't really hear much about them anymore. And I feel like their books kind of went with them. Mm-hmm. Maybe not everybody, but some of them. And so I don't know that we would. So yes, I do think even personally, I think I will. I go to the. I'm more attracted to you know, to the to the big name people because a lot of times I know what they think. Right. Yeah. Right. And I know what they believe. So like with John Piper, I know what he I've heard enough from him now that I know what he thinks and I know what he believes. And I think even you mentioned maybe one time last week that even though it may not all be 
exactly what I line up with or agree with. I know majority of what he's going to say. You know what you're going to get. And I like what he has to say, so I'm curious, and I'm going to read that because I want to see what he has to say about whatever. Like, he's got a new book out now about Paul that I'd be interested in. Just cause yeah. yeah. Interested on his take on Paul. So I, I don't know if that answered your question, but I, I do think personally I, I, I probably do that more than I should. Well, because uh, I was on Facebook yesterday, and I even saw that David Platt's coming out with a new book this year. And I was like, oh, wow, look. See, your eyes just lit up. <laughs> it did. That's what I'm and I was like, oh, wow. Because it, the description, of, I can't remember what the description of it was, but it had something to do with he went to a foreign country and it opened his eyes to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And what truths did he find behind those things? Yeah. And I thought, oh, that's really fascinating or whatever. And so then I thought about our podcast and I was like, wow, uh, it, am I, do I want to read that because I want to be enlightened on a certain subject? Or do I want to read that because it's David Platt's new book? Yeah. Well, I, I even know for me that... I'll see like a book and I'll read the title and I'll be like, oh, you know, like that looks like it would mm-hmm. be good. And then I'll look at the author and if I don't really know anything about them, I probably will stray away. Exactly, but like, yeah. Mainly because I don't really know like how they view things. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. So I don't want to be reading a book by someone who theology is way out of whack for mine. But Right, 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 right. So, well, is it, is it, okay, so is it dangerous to do that? Because I do that all the time. Like, if we're just being transparent here and honest, I do, like, in the new, like, when you go to Lifeway and you see, like, the best sellers, mm-hmm. or you see, like, the new, I'm 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 more of looking probably at the author. Like, okay, I don't really like them. Not a big fan of their writing. Not a, and then if I see the John Piper, okay, let's, I like him. Let's yeah. see what he wrote. Yeah. So it's it's almost like I come to the, I like look at the author first and yeah. then and maybe that makes me a terrible person I don't know but no I I don't think it's dangerous to do but I think y- there's a fear you know there's some like there's a fear of missing out I guess you yeah. know like there's some books that I've read by no name people that are great yeah uh, but at the same time if I were to even reference that book or ask somebody to read it they'd be like well I, I don't know who that is or you know that I've never heard of that. So there's there's some traction issues with that. Well, you know? I feel like too, kind of like you were saying, Will, and like I do too. I feel like it can become dangerous if you start to like idolize that person, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. You're like solely just getting stuff out of their books. You're yes. like no longer going to scripture, like mm-hmm. that kind of right. stuff. Right. Well, I do agree with that. I think you should you should. Re- I'm a big reader, so I I would say you should probably read from a variety of yeah. Just like if you're listening to podcasts about people, you should not listen just to the same guy. Yeah. yeah. Every week you should do. And so I think you do the same thing with reading. I think there could be seasons of your life where you read from just one person. Like like if I'm like cuz we talked about uh reading from people in churches of the past, you know? Right. Like like our early church fathers. Like yeah. I want a church father that I dedicate a lot of reading time to. Mm-hmm. And if I want to read that guy's book for a semester, I'm going to do that. But at the same time, I'm not going to read that guy's book and work solely for the rest of my life you know you've got to have a healthy a healthy dose so combining all these three three things together i'm just going to ask you all a simple question i'm not going to elaborate on the question like i usually do i'm going to shut up and i'm just going to ask you the question okay is seeking to be entertained okay is seeking to be entertained so as as a christian now as a christian just in general outside of church we're going to get to church but right in general is it okay to be entertained so this is like not Christian books, like outside of church kind of stuff. This is anything outside of church. It can be Christian books, Christian movies, or whatever. Oh, okay. But it's anything. Is it okay to be entertained? I, uh, I would, yeah, I think so. I mean, I would say so. I don't know that it's absolutely. If that's all you're wanting is to be entertained, I don't feel like that's. I don't know. That's that's a difficult because I think of. Yeah, what ways are you being entertained? I think matters. What are you being yeah. entertained by matters. But if you just take the basic, is it okay to be? Because our, I don't know, our attention spans aren't. We we struggle to focus on one thing, so I feel like we almost have to be entertained sometimes. Yeah. To, but I don't. I, so okay. So just to answer your question, yes, I think it's okay to be entertained. Okay, what about you, Kayla? Do you think it's do you think it's okay? I think like Will said, I think it's okay. It just you need to yeah, you need to watch like how you're being entertained. Like it depends on what you're doing to be entertained. But like say like go into a Georgia game on a Saturday, like to be entertained, I don't necessarily feel like that's a bad thing. Like if mm-hmm. you just as long as you're not idolizing the things that you're being entertained by. Right. Right. So so when is it not okay? 
uh, if you, I think it's not. A, um, <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. This is hard. <laughs> So when is it not okay to be entertained? Yeah, when, when it, during your entertainment does it become not okay? Because you both said that it's okay. If it starts to change your maybe line of thought on something. So say you're watching a Christian movie and you believe something and then in that movie it's something different than what you believe in and you're starting to change. I think if it changes kind of your morals or changes your your way of thinking about something, maybe it's not okay. Like, okay. Because I, I, when I think of entertainment, I'm thinking of kind of mindless entertainment. like. Mm-hmm. When you go home at night, what you're not going to do is open your Bible for the for the five hours you're at home before you go to bed. Sure. And just read. You're probably going to turn on the TV. You're going to watch Food Network. Right. Whatever, yeah. whatever, <laughs> whatever yeah. you're going to watch and then yeah. go to bed. You know? And so that to me, that's my, because what I'm not hearing from one of the, when watching Food Network or whatever, I'm, they're not telling me anything that's like changing my like way yeah. of thinking. Right. Yeah. They're not like changing anything I do. They're just, it's just fun to watch at times well even like well even if you do watch something and it does kind of like you you start to kind of question what your like your line of thinking like if you're watching a christian movie and something happens and you're like oh like you just start to question what you believe i feel like you should always like point back to scripture Mm -hmm. like you shouldn't ever just take from that and run with it like you should look into it for yourself right well i think another thing as well when it's probably dangerous to be to to be to seeking to entertain, I think that was your question, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is if it takes the place of a gathering. So if you're doing something on Sunday morning because you want to be entertained, but you're not at church, yeah. like that's probably dangerous. Or even a Wednesday night, Sunday night, you know, we think of or Saturday night, such as true. If you're spending, you're not going to bed until two a.m. because you're doing this other thing. You know, I've always heard that quote that Sunday morning church is a Saturday night decision, mm-hmm. right? You decide yeah. to. And so I think a lot of those things are to be thought about. Don't you don't want to go out and do something until two a.m. on a Saturday night? Or the first thing that comes to my mind is sports. Mm-hmm. You know, in the area that we live in, is that we you know sports are really high around here. They're king around here. Yeah, yeah. and so we you know think about that. Well, what are all sports are entertainment, right? Yeah. That's the goal is to yeah. entertain the. When you go to a Georgia game, you hope to be, it's a good game, so it's entertaining, right? Yeah. Nobody hopes to go and they just kind of sit there. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole point of the football game is for them to win, but for the fans to come and watch. And so that's, that's all sports is, is entertainment. Right. And so I, th- I think that a lot of that, I think that's something to think about too, is that it becomes dangerous when we start missing our weekly gatherings with with church because of these things that we are being yeah. entertained by. So I, I I am pumped about this new Avengers movie that's coming out. Like if you if you were to be at my household for the last couple of days, I've been kind of watching these Marvel movies. You know, they're playing in the background. I'm playing with Charlotte, and I look up, see Iron Man, smile, look back down. You know, <laughs> like that's literally what I've been doing for the past week. But it, the new Avengers movie is three hours long. Oh wow, it's not three hours that. long, right? And like they even asked the directors, "When's a good time to go to the bathroom?" There was like, "There's not a good time," and I'm like, "Just kill me." So, <laughs> but like that's my that's my dream. Like when since I've been ten years old, I've wanted to see something like this, mm-hmm. and so I'm pumped about this movie. But I can't help but think in the back of my brain, you're about to spend three hours sitting in a room with a bunch of other people who think just like you, and you're going to watch this movie, and it's literally going to have nothing. Like, you're literally going to be productive in no way out of it. Does that make sense? Right. Like, you're not even talking to each other in the theater, right? Because, like, who, like, people can't stand people who talk in theaters. Like, you, you like, that's not what you're doing. So, I, I'm going to watch this movie. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. I'm going to do this. It may not be, like, the week or two it comes out, but I'm going to see that movie. And I just, I'm still struggling with the fact, just a little bit, not enough to make me not go, but just enough to annoy me to go, well, do you really need to sit in three hours and, and, and watch that and be away from your kid and, you know, just do that for yourself? Like, is that really what you ought to be doing? And, and, and I don't know if it's out of being, out of, out of the desire to be entertained or what it is. And I think it's interesting that y'all brought up sports because sports is different than that, isn't it? A football game is about three hours long, give or take, right? Right. Let's yeah. say you live two hours away from the stadium. Okay, well, now the three-hour game's turned into seven. Yeah. It takes you two hours to get there, two hours to get back. That's four hours. But then the reality is is there's not many fans that get there right when the game starts. You're probably going to get there two or three hours early. You're going to eat. You're going to tailgate. You're going to go see people or whatever. Then you're going to go to the game. So now we're probably closer to 10 hours, 
that you spent on this football game. And then not only that, but then afterwards, there's some of us that like to hang out with our friends afterwards or mm-hmm. hang out in the stadium or hang out at our tailgate outside of it or whatever. And that's another two or three hours. Now we're at 13, 14 hours into this one event. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm not saying that in and of itself, football is terrible because I would be a super hypocrite if I said that because I love football. But the reality is, is in those 14 hours, how often is the mission of God in your life being portrayed out of you to the people you're around? And I'm not saying that you have to like carry a physical cross and drag it through the stadium. That's not what I'm saying. But how often in our entertainment are we just sitting there yeah. wanting to be entertained? talking about the plays or or whatever, talking about the movies or whatever it is, and we've not uttered the name of Jesus in 14 hours because of a football game? And I love football just as much as anybody else. But if we're going to these football games and going to these movies and you know going to these concerts and it doesn't matter if it's Christian or not and we're just sitting there wanting to be entertained and the name of Jesus isn't uttered one time, does that bother you? Does that bother me? You know? Like, these are things that I think about all the time. I'm like, okay, I could do this, but, you know, I'm going to the draft in a couple weeks. That's a three-day event. All about football. All about the draft. And not one time have I thought to myself, okay, am I going to under the name of Jesus while I'm there? I'm just I'm just asking. like, And, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but there's people that go to every single home Georgia football game. Mm-hmm. And how many home games do they have? Half of them are home. It's like six or seven. Yeah, usually. probably. Are you going to spend 14 hours on Georgia football? Four, seven times? 14 hours? Seven times? That's a lot of hours. Yeah. I mean, that's like an all day thing. Yeah. Every time. It's an all day thing. There's not many people that wake up, drive, go to the game, right? get there right when it starts, when it ends, drive right back. Like that's That's not usually how it happens, right? So in our entertainment, are, are we... Are we seeking to glorify God through our entertainment? I don't know that we I don't know that we do that. Because because like we talked about on an episode, I can't remember which one it was, but we like to car- compartmentalize our life, mm-hmm. right? Like we do this here, right. we do Jesus at church, you know, we might do Jesus at our job sometimes and then we're going to go to Disney World. It's like, okay, yeah. well, how is Jesus separate from Disney World? Because if Jesus is everything, how is he not in at Disney World with you? Like he has at work with you or he's at school with you or church with you. Because I feel like there's got to be a mindset, right? Like, am I the only one in the room that thinks this? Well, what, what, what would you, what would you do? What would be different? What would you, do you go to the Georgia game and. Cause I'm not saying don't go to the Georgia game. That's not what I'm saying. Right. So what, how, what would I do different? Well, for me, like whenever I think about it, I think that you can use those like sources of entertainment to share the gospel in a way. Like I do feel like, say, like a high school football game, even around here, like if you know somebody that's there like every Friday night and that loves to go and do that, but you like maybe want to share the gospel with them or want to invite them to church, like anything like that, build a relationship with them so you can mm-hmm. eventually do that. Right. I feel like if that's like, say, your only opportunity to really reach that person would be there. Right. Or to invite them there and Mm -hmm. to like build a relationship with them. Like, I I feel like that's making better use of your time. Right. And I'm not advocating that we go with like gospel tracks. Yeah. Looking to save every soul. You know, like, that's not what I'm advocating for. But like, how often is Jesus in the forefront of all that we do? Because isn't isn't that what we're called to do in essence? It's Mm -hmm. probably not often. You know, and that's what I'm saying is when I go see Avengers, Jesus is going to be the last thing on my mind, right? Like I'm thinking about Tony Stark and Thor and the Hulk. I'm thinking about these people, you know, well, and, and I'm escaping. Yeah, that. you're yeah, you're escaping reality. I'm leaving Jesus and the world behind me, and I'm focusing on this one thing. And again, I'm not saying you, we shouldn't do these things, but I think that there is a point to be made that. You know, if, 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 if where is Jesus in all of this? Well, yeah. I feel like, too, it becomes a problem when, which I'm just as guilty as anyone else with this, but, like, we're okay with spending, like, 14 hours to go to a Georgia game, but, like, we're checking our clocks or, like, our watch every five minutes, like, on a Sunday morning. Right. 
like I don't know I just feel like you're prioritizing that over that there's times when you prioritize like your entertainment over like worship or being sure. discipled and like you just put that at the like forefront of your life right and and again like if you go to like one Georgia game a, a semester and you do this 14 hour extravaganza or whatever it is or whatever football team it is it doesn't have to be Georgia and then you miss church the next day maybe once or mm-hmm. twice in a semester, whatever. But like if it's every Sunday, aren't you screaming loud and clear <laughs> what the priority is in your life? I'm just asking. Like, where's the priority in your life? Is it Jesus or is it something different? So and, you're saying that we should... And if you're missing church, did, when you were at the Georgia game, was Jesus on the forefront of your mind? I don't know. I just, I, uh, I don't know. Doubt it, yeah. I, I don't <laughs> know. You know, I just don't know. It, it, and again, it's in every individual basis. So should I not go watch the Avengers? Uh, well, I'll be there. Uh, okay, so <laughs> what, okay, so what is the, what is the solution then? I don't know the answer. Or is there not, so maybe, maybe the answer is we should just shouldn't do these things all the time? Well, I feel or like, like, it, like Eric said, like if you're going to every single home Georgia game and because of it, you're missing church on Sunday morning, like every Sunday morning, I feel like that's when it's a problem. So if I go to every home Georgia game and I make it back for Sunday morning, then I'm fine. Oh, yeah, you're a great Christian. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying in your life, if Jesus is at the forefront of everything that you do and you do everything because of Jesus, won't you be at church the next day? Well, yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'm just asking. Now, if you miss one or two, okay. Like, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to be like, oh, look what they've been doing. But at the same time, there's got to be a balance, right? Like, yeah. I think it's okay to be entertained, but once that entertainment starts pushing it, Jesus out of the door of your life, and Uga comes in, like I feel like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Though, like, I, whoever it is, you know, once you start doing that, you start treading on some really dangerous territory. Well, it's like the same thing with like playing sports like yeah. i know like there's some sports that their games are on sundays or their practices run in the wednesday nights and like i know that kind of stuff can't be helped like you don't play in the practices and the game sure but i do feel like there's a point where like if you're and my church attendance like i mean i'm not saying like none of us are saying that we're perfect with our yeah. church attendance at all like we all struggle with this like we all i don't i don't want to come off the wrong way <laughs> It's it's funny you mention because I'm actually supposed to be going to a concert in a month, yeah, which is in North Georgia, which will have me miss Sunday morning. It's just funny how this conversation comes up. I was just thinking about this yesterday. Honestly, didn't think. Just thought, okay, well, it is what it is. Right. Move on. But but, but again, if it's once every once in a while, I don't have a problem with that. Right. Because I think it's okay. Because it's not legalistic, right? We're not right. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I think it's okay to to have this kind of mindless entertainment. Every once in a while, right? I think I think it's, it's right because that's what you know. We're all the the reality is that we're not all going to sit, go home. We're going to open our Bible and just read straight through. Right. The love yeah, like that's not. Well, it's just not real. That's not what we're going to do. Right. And so I, I agree. I, I think. Well, and too, like even if like you do make it back to come at, come to church on Sunday, if you're just coming to church to show that you're there, like what's the point, anyways? Exactly. That that's why I, what I was trying to say with you is like, well, if I make it to church every Sunday, am I great? It's like, well. If that's the purpose to be there is to make it to church, I don't know that our heart is in the right place. Right. Yeah. I don't know that our intention is that. Like, you should be wanting. Like, to, I don't think to, Jesus gives a darn about you making sure you're back for church to be at church's sake. I'm not sure Jesus cares about that. Right. But if you're going to go back to church and be like, God deserves my worship corporately with believers because that is what scripture tells me to do. And I'm going to be there to do it whether I want to or not. That's where, that's what God is looking for. Yeah. You know, because the reality is, is not every week we go to church, are we just like, oh, I can't wait to get my worship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like some days I'm having a bad day or some right. weeks have been terrible, you know, but I worship God, not necessarily because I want to all the time, but because he deserves it. Yeah. So now you're getting into this different territory or whatever. Okay. Well, let's switch gears and let's talk about the church and entertainment. Right, 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 right. So let me open up that with uh, some scripture here from Matthew. Okay. okay? So Matthew chapter 12, uh, verses 38 through 42, Jesus interacts with the uh, Pharisees. And he has just got done doing a ton 
of scripture references. He's been doing analogies, all this type of thing. So this is what they say. This is, this is 38. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. So basically they're saying, Entertain us, right. Jesus. Do this for us. We've, you, we're in the 12th chapter of Matthew already. You've already done some cool stuff. Do some more cool stuff. So Jesus responds this way. Typical Jesus, right? He answered them, An evil and adulterous generation demands a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of a huge fish three days and three nights, so the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. And the men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at Jonah's preaching. And look, something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And look, something greater than Solomon is here. So the Pharisees are looking to see something. They're looking to be a part of something. They want to see Jesus do something. And Jesus is saying, listen, it's not about the things that are happening. It's about me. It's about the person. It's about the person who's greater than Jonah, who's greater than Solomon, who's greater than Moses, who's greater than Adam. It's, a, it's, about, it's about a person. So let's change gears here and look at the church specifically. And I think that this is something we've kind of delved into a little bit, but I really, really want to push in here. So let's talk about entertainment in the church. So churches recently, probably within the last 15 or 20 years, have really stepped up their game as far as entertaining people. That's what they want to do. They're like, okay, to get, to get as many people in the door, we need to contemporize, to contemporize our music. We need to put smoke machines out. We need to light it up. We need to have a guitar just destroying the walls of our church. We need to make sure that everything like this is good. We need to make sure that uh, the preacher is popular, is relatable, is applicable, everything like that. He's great. He's dynamite. And then we need to make sure we have great programs and things that we want to bring our kids to and all this stuff. So let me pose this to y'all. When it comes to church, is being enter entertained at church a factor when choosing a church? Yes. For for me? Yeah. Or for other people? For you. I'm asking you. Um, other no. people aren't here. Okay, okay. Well, let me... No. Not... <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I... I think it. I think it may be like last on the list, right? Because you still made the list. It it did though. I because I don't. I, I don't know that I'm going to a church and just. Yeah. Okay. Let me, a good question. Let me okay. pose you a question. Okay. So you live in the middle of a podunk town in Alabama, <laughs> and you live here because your family's there. You love living there. It's where your job is. You're not going anywhere. Okay. This town has like one road in it. Let's just say it's got one road and it's got one Baptist church. Right. God calls you to go to church, he calls you to be a member of a church. Yeah. He calls you to be an active servant in that church. But you don't really like this church. Music's kind of old. Preacher's kind of old. You don't really <laughs> want anything to do with it. There's not any really programs for your children. <laughs> but that's the only church you have. That's all you got. Then I'm going to that church. Yeah. And you're, are you going to go to the church? Yeah, if it's the only one. Because <laughs> that trumps my idea of entertainment. But if I have two of the exact same... And they're both biblically sound. They're both expositional preaching. They both have great programs. But this one adds a little bit more lights than this one. And they're they're the exact same on all like the fundamental levels, right? So if we're thinking about this, I'm choosing a church. Fundamentally, I'm looking for expositional preaching. I'm looking for, you know, godly leadership. I'm looking for some kind of discipleship programs. What is their youth doing? What are their children doing? What are they doing with evangelism? And if both churches line up the exact same, but the church on the right here really uses lights well, and it sounds good. This church on the right probably is where I'm going to go because it's more just attractive. Okay, but I don't know that that's foundational again. I don't. I, I don't. I'm not out looking for a church that uses lights. If they both, if the one on the right's not biblically sound and they're not doing that, then I'm going to the one on the left. But they're both the same. Then yes, I'm drawn more to the. Okay, that's an interesting opinion. So, Kayla, okay. what is uh, <laughs> what is your opinion? Um, well, I feel like first and foremost, because we're human, that part of us has the desire to be entertained. Like we don't want to just sit like a lump on a log mm -hmm. and just stare at the wall. Like we kind of, like, I mean, every, all of us like have that in us. So, I mean, like Will said, I mean, I'd probably be the same way. I'm not saying that's right, but I, I mean, I feel like if they're biblically sound, but one 
is this is kind of a for a lack of better words more fun to be at mm-hmm. then i would want to be at the church that's just more fun to be at sure now the reality is is that's a faulty because there's no two churches that are the exact same yeah i mean you're sure. right right and so well yeah. every illustration is going to break down sometime. right so the reason i ask that is because again and y'all and y'all probably know this i've been on this old testament kick for a while now and it's not ended. Like I continually just continue to read from it and get inspiration from it because it's so good and it's so in depth. Now there's some points in Joshua where they're delegating the land that I'm not great with. You get a pasture land. And you, you get, get one too, land. you know, and I'm like, right. oh my goodness, when's this going to end? But the more I think about it, the more, especially when I read from the prophets, the more that I feel like God calls people to where they don't want to be. Yeah. Well, he calls us to be uncomfortable. Exactly. And so we live in this Christian culture, and and, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but we live in this Christian culture where the preaching and the music matters so much. And and, and, and when I was younger, it mattered to me too. But now that I'm, well, I'm only 29, but in my (laughs) 29 years, those two things just don't matter anymore to me. Like they just don't. Really? Yeah. Okay, so what does? When you're looking for a church, is it just somewhere that'll pay you? No, when, when I no 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 that's not it at all. That's not it at all. When I'm when I'm looking for a church, which the last time I looked for a church was before I worked at one. Right. So uh, you go on vacation. Right, 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 right. right. What, I, what I'm saying is, is it doesn't matter what I'm looking for. It doesn't matter what music they're doing. It doesn't matter if they're expositionally sound. It doesn't matter if they're doing all this stuff. What does matter is if God wants me there. Mm-hmm. That's what matters. Because the reality is, is that, because we talked about this the other day, uh, I can't remember, Kale, if you were there or not, but we were talking about these good, solid preachers going and preaching at these conferences with these people that aren't so great. It always happens, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not going <laughs> to name any conferences, but it happens, <laughs> right? It happens. And so we, we always ask this question, like, why are they doing that? Are they bad now? What should we do about this? You know, we're in an uproar or whatever, which is really dumb, but you know, Francis Chan responded to it and goes, but what if I could talk to someone there and share good, sound doctrine with that person and change that person? So, again, it's it's not my job to go to a church and fundamentally change it from the ground up. That's not what I'm saying. But if God wants me to be a part of an unhealthy church, then that's where I'm going to be. If God puts me in a church that has completely contemporary music, that's where I'm going to be. If God puts me somewhere where the preaching is bad, that's where I'm going to be, you know? Because you're... Because our role isn't to look for the entertainment within the church and then decide, okay, is this a church I want to be a part of? No, 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 no. That's not how it works. God is saying, this is where you're going. Mm-hmm. Go there. You're like, well, God, but preachers kind of stale. Well, God, okay, so- they only do hymns. Well, God, there's nothing for my children here, which I think are all valid, practical questions of God. But it's not as though, it does not seem as though any time God commanded anybody to go anywhere, that any of that mattered. You know, like, Abraham, I need you to go to a nation you've never been to, and I'm going to need you to do all this. Not that I'm comparing us to Abraham, because we're not. But what I'm saying is, is that God actively asks people to do things that are outside of their comfort zone and things that they don't like. And I think this heavily applies to picking, quote unquote picking, because I don't think you're picking. That's just my this is what I think. I don't think you're yeah. picking. Uh, God is picking it for you. This is the place you should be at. Because, and I agree, there's part of me that goes, man, if there's just not good preaching, I'm not getting anything out of this. Or if the music isn't doctrinally sound, I'm not getting anything out of this. But but is that what church is for? Mm-hmm. Is church for, what am I getting out of this? Well, it's very easy to make it about yourself and what you want. Right. So where's the disconnect? Like, I feel like there's a massive disconnect. Like when churches break off from churches or a new church moves in from down the road or whatever it is, like people go to that church, right? I've seen a thousand times. Mm -hmm. They go to that church because it's the new thing and they do new music and they've got a new preacher and they've got all these different things. And it's like, well, that's great. But is that where God wants you to be? And if you say, yes, great, go on. That's fine. Still love you. How do you know? Is he gonna just put a sign in front of your face? And says, I think it's a burning to... bush. I think that's how God works. Just burning bush. Okay. Yeah, but no, like seriously, like what I, is like? I think I think you have to get a point in your life where you put all entertainment behind you, 
as far as church goes, and then you have to feel peace about being at a church. Because I've been at some churches that I've absolutely loved, and the preaching was good, and the music was good, and I did not feel peace in my heart that this is where I should be at. I'm just like, this is not, this isn't it. And I love the message, and I love the music, and I love the people, and I love the food, and I loved the free gift I got at the door. Like, that was great. That's awesome. But that has none of that has anything to do with, is this where God wants me to be? Because I did a... I did this thing called RTN at Southwestern where I had to go and preach at a bunch, at this church five days, do a revival. And I loved this church. I did. I, they were all 60 plus. The church had been there for 150 years. A real small church, about 20, 25 people. And one of the last nights they asked me if I'd be interested in being their pastor. Now it had to be part-time. I would have to find another job somewhere else until the church kind of, I mean, this place was in the middle of nowhere. And as much as I wanted to explore that opportunity, I just didn't have peace in my heart about it. I'm like, God was not letting me have peace in that moment. Like, uh, I had peace when I married Julia. I had peace when we found out we were pregnant with Charlotte. I had peace when I started interviewing with Blackshear to be here. All of those things I had peace with. And none of that had anything to do with uh, a priority of mine or something like that. Like, you know, all of them had something that I liked, you know, mm-hmm. because it's it's going to be very rare that you find something that you hate everything about. Like, yeah, like that's just rare. But I but I think that you've got to find where God wants you to be. And I think that is so foreign. That is so foreign to the church. Uh, because I've got some quotes from A.W. Tozer here that are really good. Uh, and the first one is this. Uh, I can safely say on the authority of all that is revealed in the Word of God that any man or woman on this earth who is bored and turned off by worship is not ready for heaven. And I think what, yeah. he, and I think what he means by that is, is y- you can be in the most contemporary, awesome, environment for worship and you're still surrounded by bored individuals and i continue to believe that in my own life like just because the entertainment is up doesn't mean the worship is up you know well i mean if you're like passionately in love with jesus then like it won't matter what worship there is at the church exactly like you'll be ready no matter what. Like, you'll desire to do that no matter if it's contemporary hymns, one person singing, ten people singing, it mm-hmm. won't matter. Right, exactly. If that's your heart. Exactly. Another quote from A.W. Tozer, which is just brilliant, is he says, Christians don't tell lies, they just go to church and sing them. Yeah, I've heard that before. Too. Like, like it, it, it's this whole concept of what do I need in a church? Yeah, I know I did the quotation signs. If you're on the podcast, you didn't see that. But quotation marks, <laughs> what I need in a church, dot, 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 and just fill in the blank. Do I need a church that has a great children's program? Because I have seven kids, and they are not sitting with me in the service, so I need somewhere to put them. Well, I mean, who are we to think that, like, just because we, like, we don't want to go to a church because they don't have all the things that we want. But if God sends us there, like, who are we to say, like, well, they don't have mm-hmm. this. Right. I mean, his judgment is obviously way better than ours ever could be. Mm-hmm. Right. So I feel like with that, you kind of have to learn to trust in the Lord, too, and sacrifice all those things that you want in a church. Mm-hmm. So I can tell that Will is over there writhing in pain. And, and <laughs> I'm str- okay. I'm struggling. And he's struggling so with this answer. I agree with what you're saying. I, I but I think it's different from your perspective or from our perspective than from somebody who's a new believer. Mm-hmm. Because I w- what I would not tell, and I don't think you guys would either, is tell a new believer, okay, you you should pray, and if God wants you to go to that church down the road that we know is not biblically sound, they're not teaching great stuff, but you're going to be able to tell them something new. I just don't know that I'm. Because what I want to tell that new believer is, okay, you need to be fed. You need to be discipled. Go to the church that I know is doing well. They've got, and we'll send a seasoned believer who really is, I I just think it's different from not, I guess, you know, okay, we should all pray and we should go to whatever church God feels like God's pushing us to. I agree with that aspect, but I just, I don't know that we're doing this to, I don't know that we're evangelizing and we're sending people to the church down the road because we want them to give now that I have a specific church in mind, I don't know. Does that make sense? Like, I'm like, I don't feel like we should tell our, 
new believers, people who haven't been discipled yet, people who don't know much about anything and don't really know their core truths or their fundamental beliefs to go. But then again, I guess if, in your case, we wouldn't be telling them to do any. They would be praying and God would be showing them where to go, right? Well, I guess the primary question I would ask both of you is, what is the what is the role of Sunday morning in the Christian life? What is it for? Corporate worship, corporate. Yeah. You all come together and you're being fed by. Are you? I mean, that's what is that your primary source of feeding? Is it? No, from? I don't think it's your no, primary it source. Be. Exactly, and that and that's the point, right? Is that it's more about the corporate worship of Jesus, right, in the worship service. That's why I would like to push back a little bit on that idea is that if there's if you go to that church down there that's got poor doctrine, blah, 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 this, there might be one person there with good doctrine. And if that person disciples that new believer, then you're starting to see a new change in the church. If you've got two people now that have sound doctrine or firm in their faith, you know, and so it's hard because I think in our brain we get it backwards. Like, OK, the guy up there on the stage, that's my primary feeding for the week. No, you're starving yourself. You know what I'm saying? Case, yeah. Like, yeah. that's my primary feeding, and if that's bad, the church is bad, and I'm leaving. Like, that's, you've got it backwards. Like, your primary feeding should be what you're doing yourself and what someone who's come alongside you to help you. Like, there's, gotta, there's that personal relationship with that, right? Like, like, Jesus was always with his disciples, right? And then when he sent them out, he didn't send them out alone. He sent them out in groups of two or three. So it's... It's like we get this concept backwards. It's like church is is here, and if that guy is telling me something that's wrong, then that guy's wrong, and I'm out. Well, and Tay, that's put in like, that's put in like your stock all into that person. Mm-hmm. Right. Like that's not like you're not doing it on your own. I feel like you're kind of banking off of that person. Right. If that's how you view things. Right. And it's not just the pastor. It could be the worship team or whatever it is at the church. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, I, again, I, I agree with that form of thought, but I just don't. I don't know. I, I go I back and know. forth. I'm I not struggle. saying I'm sold on that on that new believer well, issue there. I just think I just I think that's where we get into some gray area. I completely agree that um, where we because then that goes into like, you know, everybody does the church shopping when they go to somewhere new as they mm-hmm. kind of shop around where they want to go. Sure. Um, until they find just that perfect I don't know. I just think there's. I think there may be a little bit more gray with a uh, with someone who doesn't really know what they believe. They just know they believe something with somebody who doesn't. Because I just because I just feel like they're going to be easily swayed, maybe in a different. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just struggle there a little bit. I mean, uh, there's definitely some gray area there, but I go back and forth on that issue with the new believer stuff because yeah. it's like. You know, well, part of me thinks that you know they're new believer. They're probably a little bit more gullible than somebody else. Um, they've not, they don't have a firm foundation. Well, Jesus is their foundation, but like they don't have a firm foundation of doctrine or, you know, whatever they believe. So they could be swayed, which I would agree with. But at the same time, you know, I don't, I, I don't know how often, well, that, are they hap- truly I don't know how often a- that happens though. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I definitely see what you're saying, Will, though. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, I, it's, I think it's just something to think about. I'm not yeah. saying I could be, again, I'm only 19. I could be completely wrong, but I just think it's something to, this isn't as cut and dry. And I think that's kind of my main point is that yeah. it's not, you're not going to wake up and there's going to be a big sign in front of you that says you should go to first Baptist. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I think that there's a lot of prayer and wisdom from God. there. Well, there's, but, there's a lot of, and I would say that you're a fairly anxious person, right? Yeah. You're a fairly I'm, anxious I'm, person. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Great. Um, but I feel like you have a piece about being at first Baptist, don't you? Yeah. I agree. And I that's feel like, I'm, right. And I'm saying that I feel like we forget that that feeling of this is where I'm supposed to be, we forget that feeling, okay? Like, instead of taking that feeling and running with it, what we do is we go, and I'm not saying your faith's all about feelings, okay? Like, I've been serving in some pretty uncomfortable spots. But as far as choosing and belonging and being at a place, I feel like we forget that and we focus on the entertainment portion of church instead of feeling like, okay, where does God want me to be at? And I think there's a difference between comfortable and peace, right? Like there, there's a difference between those two things. Yeah, well, and I would agree with that because I think I've heard, and I could be wrong, but I think I've heard before that if you're if you're really comfortable at where you're at, you might not then be. You may, yeah, place. you may want to re-invite because God never calls us to be comfortable. Yeah, and I, I mean, you mentioned earlier, like almost everywhere He sends, 
people or one of you guys mentioned that it you know it's normally not in a comfortable situation you're normally going somewhere you know you're not going to like you know you're really not going to enjoy it yeah. um, and and that's like you said with that piece that those are the different there's and, that and i really and, and i know how y'all have if, if y'all have ever thought about this but there's been so many times where i've looked at a popular church like jd greer's church or matt chandler's church and i and i kind of have a burden for them because you know for a fact that there's people that go to their church because of who they are and what they say and how good their worship is and what the experience is like and all that stuff, right? Oh, for sure. And weeding through like, okay, should this person be a member of our church? Like, are they just here because of Instagram or are they here because they want to be a valuable member of our church? Well, I mean, that would be hard. Like if you lived in that area and there was... Like a church with like three people, but the Lord called you there. But then right next to it was Matt Chandler's church. I mean, yeah, it's like, well, no, you, no I'm making Matt Chandler's yeah. church. You know what I'm saying? So it's, well, I did that, right? I mean, I've I did my my year at Southwestern. I spent in at and that's Matt and that's church. a massive area too. Like that's a huge city. Yeah, Matt there's Chandler's tons in. and tons. And even he makes the point, or other people make the point that if you're driving, and this is just being transparent here, but. <laughs> He made the point that if you're driving more than like 30 minutes, he said there's tons of biblically sound churches around here yep. that you can go serve at right next to you in your community. Do yep. not drive here. I have a podcast. Go listen to my podcast or my video. <laughs> you know, and so I think they, I yep. agree. I think they can see that as well. Right. I, I, I just want our listeners to keep this thought in front of their mind, especially whatever church you're at and whatever you're listening to or whoever's your pastor or whoever's your worship team. Like you really need to consider is the entertainment value of the church that I currently attend is what keep is what is keeping me at this church? Like, right. is, is that what's keeping me here, or is this is, or is this where God wants me to be? Yeah, I and, think, and I wouldn't answer that question in an instant. Like, I would seriously think about that question. Yeah, no, it takes time. I agree. That was kind of that's the main. It it doesn't. You're not just gonna pop up in as your most things with Jesus and yeah, Christianity. Takes, not much thing. Not many things are. <laughs> yeah, instantly Split known. Second. Like yeah. you need to really think about that. And so, for those of us who work in the AV department and like the lights and the sound, you're not saying that any of that's bad. Right? Oh, we no, shouldn't take of any of that not. away. Of course not. Because how would anyone hear me if not for y'all? You right. know? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not a strong enough speaker to just yell out while I'm preaching or whatever. Because right. then the six year old in the back is not going to hear me. You know what I mean? Right. It's like then I'm like, well, why are you in the back anyway? So. It, but it's not bad. No, like, it's not you bad. No, like, you're not when no. you're when you're looking or when you're praying about a church. You're no. not. There's nothing sweeter in a church service to me than hearing the electric guitar. I'm just being honest. <laughs> right. I'm just being honest with you. When I hear an electric guitar in a church, I'm like, man, this is where I'm supposed to be. Or when we're at cross conference and they're playing electric guitar, I'm like, man, this is this is the stuff right here. Like this is what I miss. Right. And I think it's okay to miss those type things, but it's desiring those type things is the is the issue. Uh, but no, I, I again, I, I would say that the people that do sound, that make people heard, that project these sounds out, that put up words on screens, that put uh, lights on the stage or whatever, like all of those things add to the experience, right? But the, at the end of the day, and I think sound people would agree with this too, at the end of the day, if there was none of that and there was one person on the stage singing glorifying God, they'd be okay with that. Well, it was like Dr. Aiken told us on the when we interviewed him on that podcast episode where if you go out in the middle of nowhere in some country, you know, they're sitting on leaves and you don't have that. You know, and so I, I would agree. I think the gospel can be preached regardless of if you have a mic, sound, lights. And, yeah, and going back to the passage I read from Jesus, it's like they're wanting to see the fish spit right. Jonah out on the on the on the dry land. They're wanting to see Solomon and all of his majesty and wisdom. That's what they're wanting to see. And all the while they're missing the plain thirty year old Jesus looking at him in the face, right. giving him truth. Right. They're missing it because they want to see Jonah and a fish and they're and they're but they're they're missing the King of Kings who's standing right in front of them telling them the truth. Right. And, and I think that if we had that type of perspective especially when it comes to church, I think that we would be much wiser in how we choose churches. Right. No, I agree. So let me ask you one, I guess, one kind of final question, unless you have anything else. Go ahead. Um, so if I'm the church member and I, I'm a big volunteer, like to do, I teach Sunday school, I'm teaching a Bible study, and I'm listening to this, and now I'm looking back and reflecting, and I think, okay, well, I'm really comfortable where I am. What What should I do? Do I start praying about other churches? Does God want me to go? 
somewhere else and use my talents there? Do I pray about adding something else? Uh, is comfortable not? Is comfortable okay? Yeah. What, what should I do? I think thinking about going to another church right off the bat is probably not the wisest thought probably. to think. Uh, but at the same time, I think you should be. I think you should be reevaluating your role at the church. Like, if, like, there's a difference between thriving where you're at and being comfortable where you're at. Because if, for instance, if you're teaching Sunday school to a bunch of teenage boys, like you have no idea what they're thinking. They're the craziest people in the world. You have no idea what's going on in their brain, right? Mm-hmm. You need to be constantly aware that there's most likely a sixth or eighth grade boy in your class that's lost. And you need to be burdened for that lost student, you know. And that goes for middle school boys, high school girls, whatever it is. And I think if, as long as that is there in your life, you're probably in the right spot. But if you're just coming to Sunday school just to teach because you love it, then you probably need to reevaluate. I, I, I think it has less to do with your situation at a church and more to do what are you doing in your church at the moment and are your priorities in line with what Jesus needs you to think. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like you, those two things have to be the same. And once they drift, I'm not saying you need to move, but you need to start aligning back those stars. Okay, my motivation and Jesus' motivation are the same. Okay, now that your conviction is back and you, you're still comfortable, then you might want to think about at least changing ministries in your church. Right. And Doing again, I, I don't want to lose volunteers and youth. That's the worst. But at the same time, I would rather lose a really good volunteer and that volunteer go and do whatever they're called to do. So. Right. No, I agree. Thank you for listening to the Pastor and Intern Podcast. We would always like to thank all of our listeners and all the people that make this possible. Without you, we couldn't do what we love, so thank you. If you have not already, please leave a rating or review on your podcast app of choice. Hopefully, this will get our message to more people. Make sure to check out our new Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages to stay up to date on the podcast. Also, don't forget to be looking out for our giveaway. Next week, we'll be talking about the good and bad of Christian music. We are for the word, for the truth, and for the church. Thanks again for listening to the Pastor and Intern Podcast.